David, 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 it is a hot summer day in Beijing. You just took the basket out. Oh. That is hilarious. Damn, hey, man, now you trying to steal stuff? We just woke up. We are in Beijing, China, the capital Woo! of China right now. There's all these delicious things on the street you can eat for breakfast. There are some very delicious street carts. They still have that in Beijing. Numerous breakfast stalls. There's actually a delicious breakfast buffet at the bottom of this hotel, but we are not going to that. Today, we are going to be exploring and showing you guys what's really good at the Beijing 7-Eleven. Yes, and you know that we've hit up 7-Elevens in all different cities that we've been in. It just fits into our journey of exploring how companies localize to the city. All right, everybody, so this is Beijing 7-Eleven. Let's go. They have kimchi flavored Lay's. And I feel like we should start with something familiar to the audience, but just with interesting flavors. One, kimchi, kimchi lays. lays. It smells kind of like kimchi, but more like another type of panchan. I like it. It's really sweet though. It's actually really good, but it doesn't taste yeah. like kimchi. It has more of like a barbecue flavor. The verdict was 3.5 out of 5. 3.5? I give it a 4.5. Really? Yeah. I just didn't, it just didn't taste like kimchi though. That's it didn't why. taste like kimchi, but it was good. Real, Real deal. deal. Wow, that tastes yeah. a lot like eel. Oh, uh, that tastes more eel-like than some eel that you get. They kind of accentuated like the parts of the eel that you don't like though. Fried crab. Tastes very similar to like a shrimp chip. It tastes like those fried crab chips that are really small and then when you deep fat fry them, they get all puffy. David, yeah, we'll pick our favorite Lay's after we eat them all. No, this one might be my favorite so far. Nah, uh -huh, but you haven't had the ridges. This is Nero Man, AKA stewed beef noodle. Beef, beef noodle, noodle soup Lay's. Lays. That flavor is kicking like none other. It does kind of taste like beef noodle soup. It kind of tastes like one of those cheap ones though. It really encapsulates the taste though. I gotta give it to him, man. I got um, yuzu, yuzu aloe. And uh, this is a really nice uh, grapefruit green tea. Wow. Oh, that was really refreshing. Wow. Do you see this real piece of the fruit? Boom. I don't think they're allowed to do that in America. I like this a lot. It's like bitter, just like grapefruit, but it's sweet. This kind of tasted like one of those lychee jellies, except blended up. Okay, so this one I'm really interested. Spicy crayfish, AKA crawfish. That tastes a lot like crawfish. Crayfish, crawfish, same thing. Kind of tastes like you just took like a dry packet of flavor and just sprinkled it over. Cucumber flavored yam chips lays. Made out of yams, not potatoes. Yo, these cucumber yam chips are amazing. The, uh, the most outstanding aspect about this chip is the uh, texture. It's really light and just kind of melts in your mouth. If we were to give one thing a five out of five, David, I think it's this. And look how healthy that looks. Look, look, they're trying to show you it came from yam. Okay, we got bows. Yo, I got a uh, clearly, what is clear to me as a taro bun. Wow, that's good. It might not be taro, actually, I think it's purple yam. Don't get mad at me, guys. This tastes better than taro. Five out of five, man. Pork, Pork and mushroom, mushroom bow. bow. This is probably the most Classic bouts of flavor. Yeah. That was pretty solid too. I'll give that one a, a four. You know what happens when you uh, eat really cheap bouts? You kind of taste the meat for like, ah, uh, is this meat like low quality? Does it does it kind of feel weird? But nah, that meat was cool. Chashu bao. For the Beijing taste buds, they definitely made it way more savory than sweet. Yeah. Cantonese people would think this was way too Salty to be a, you know, qualify as a Cantonese chashu. Well, sometimes the Cantonese chashu bao is so sweet, it looks almost like pieces of candy inside. No, this it is, definitely it is like candy. This looks more like a stewed pork. Uh, oh, which one is this, bro? First of all, this bun, Andrew, was made out of cornmeal. I gotta tell you this, and this bun right here is definitely a little bit more firm and thicker than the other fluffy buns that we were just having. This one's for Cat the vegetarians. I don't know if they're calling it and labeling it a vegetarian bun, but this has no meat in it. Egg, cabbage, corn, carrots, vermicelli. David, these are the most Chinese colas, man. Let me hit them with Google Translate. It says sugar free. Every bottle can meet adult for 30% oh, dietary fiber. Whoa. Bro, we got two diet sodas. They give you 30% of your daily dietary fiber allotment, bro. Dude, this would totally fit into the California diet. Cheers. Cucumber Sprite might be better than regular Sprite. My face was like this. 
Ooh. I like it. Beijing pies from 7-Eleven. Xian Bing. That filling is curry, kind of lit. Hold on, so I gotta say this bottom part, pretty crispy and thick. Better than Mido pie in the mall, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, Mido pie, because Mido pie is flaky. That's why I don't like it. 7-Eleven chicken. I would say mine was pretty solid. I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. You can see within the meat, there's that kind of Cajun spice that they have. I think that this could play in America, like flavor-wise. Like it just is, um, it's an isolated mm. portion, boneless part of a chicken thigh. The only gripe is that it's not crispy on the outside. Overall, flavor's good. Yo, Andrew, we're kind of arriving to the street food section where it's 7-Eleven uh, is serving foods that traditionally, I, I would imagine 10 years ago, 20 years ago for sure, were all being bought on the street by street vendors who may or may not have been licensed. It's cool to see 7-Eleven picking up the slack and providing things that were normally purchased like off the back of a cart. Yo, David, last time I saw somebody eating that was at the train station on the way up here from Shanghai. And some dude, while waiting for his train, was just going in on it. He was cleaning off the cops. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Dave A. Hey, H to the O V. We eating corn out in Swanjing, you know me. Ah. All right, sweet potato. What I love about sweet potatoes is as you cook them, they get more caramelized and soft and they even get sweeter. Beef bowser. Pretty good. Not bad. But you know what I, I don't like sometimes when you split the bow? You get like, like no meat because the, the meatball is all on one side. Yo, shout out to the Bowsers from 7-Eleven. I think that that was the thing where I was like, yeah, y'all bringing it, bringing it with the Bowser game? Straight out. Yeah, I like. They have wood ears in there. They have mushrooms. They have pork. They have a little bit of cabbage. 3.5 out of 5. Cold noodles. So David, you have uh, this cold noodle that's that's compartmentalized. Pop top. Oh shoot. This is one of the best things to eat in the summer, man. They actually sell this dish at 99 Ranch too, like yeah. pretty similar com composition. They sell this at a lot. A lot of Taiwanese spots actually serve this dish. Yeah. Cold, cold chicken, chicken sesame noodle. noodle. It's like a hot, there's like mala flavor. Yeah, yeah. Would you like that with or without the mala? For me, personally, I would prefer without the mala. I like it. I like this amount. Because the Taiwanese style, actually, it's hot, but not mala hot. Taiwanese don't eat mala. Liang Pi. It's excellent. I got a little mala kick in there, too. I would eat that at a restaurant. Wow. What do you think about the noodle consistency? Because usually this dish, it's freshly made, so the noodles are extra soft. Obviously, this one was sitting in the refrigerator, so it's not, like, extra chewy. They taste like... Like reheated. Yeah. And but I, I think the inclusion of the fresh lettuce, the way that lettuce was able to not look wilted was really impressive. Oh no, that lettuce was actually really high quality, You're right? Good point. I give this a five out of five. A woo out of woo. I think I actually like this one better. This one to me tastes more like the dish you get at the restaurant versus that one. We don't have to love the same noodle. No one said that. We're brothers, but we don't have to love the same noodle. Spicy cumin chicken. I can tell you that this is a very northern dish. Look at these peppers. Yo, I There's a say lot of western, western Chinese yeah, influence. That's a northwestern dish, bro. Hell that's yeah. Lanzo, Hell Xinjiang. Yeah. Oh man, it's just juicy. If you, made me, if you made me eat it for lunch, I wouldn't be mad. I give it a, um, I give it a three point five. Beijing donut. You can see the the avocado bits, the kiwi bits, lime. I'm interested. They need the probiotics from the yogurt too mm -hmm. to keep you regular because they eat some heavy food out here. They need the probiotics. All right, you guys, that does it for our savory round. Andrew, real quick, what was your favorite? My favorites were the following. Yam crisps, cucumber flavor, kimchi flavored chips. I know initially I didn't like them that much, but actually after tasting the other ones, I bumped this one up. This, lung mian, extra spicy. I have the purple sweet potato manto. I've got the liang pi and I've got the fried crab flavored Lay's actually. All right guys, that does it for the savory section at the Beijing 7-Eleven, but this next section is gonna be the desserts and sweets. All right, you guys, we have arrived at the China exclusive ice cream counter. Woo. Listen, when I first saw this egg ice cream, I knew that I was going to eat this. <laughs> oh, it does not look like the wow. photo. Oh, this is a meme. Whoa, tastes like swaga egg soda. I'm gonna give that a 4.5 out of five. 
it actually kind of has some eggy taste. It's funny because visually it was so disappointing, but taste-wise, I gotta say that I, I give it a 4.5. Biscuit sand. I would say the thing that's different about this from an American ice cream sandwich is one, the biscuit, and two, the ice cream is very light. I can see people not maybe thinking it has enough flavor. I really want to try this mango flavored ice cream puff. It looks from, gigantic. This is the 7-Eleven brand. That's not my favorite. Cream puffs generally do not keep well. They didn't reshape the recipe to be frozen. And this one literally tastes like they took a fresh cream puff and just froze it. Okay, so this is in collaboration with, of course, the Minions. It's a boba flavored popsicle, bro. Dude, boba flavor, Minions, I think, the 626 would love this. Similar experience as the egg one. Yeah. Kind of impressed. Tastes a lot like milk tea. Is that boba? There are actually pieces of boba in there. There are bobas in here. I like it better than regular boba. Okay, David, here we have the haagen Jasmine, raspberry, and pomegranate. I have secured the kiwi... Yeah, the kiwi flavor. Kiwi ice cream. cream. This right here, though, has a bunch of little raspberry crispies on it. Has a lot of flavor, but it's a little sweet. It's a little too sweet. Wow. No, I like this ice cream. This ice cream's good. That's what I love about the Asian flavors. They actually put real fruit and stuff. Asians are not about like kind of the fake high fructose corn syrup like made up flavors. Yo, I would say oh. that haagen to me, uh, I give the haagen uh, a five. A five out of five. I give five. it a five out of five, man. They killed it with this. So here we got two chocolate cones. This almost looks more like an art project. It's a microphone too. Uh, the coconut flavor is strong. Very, very coconutty. Very rich. This Oreo one is good. There's a lot of cookie and cream flavored ice cream out there, but I am enjoying this cone as much as any other flavor I've had. Cannot forget the durian popsicle. The most coveted popsicle of all of Southeast Asia. And also other people who like durian. Oh. Oh. Whoa, that's very strong. Whoa, that has as much durian depth of any ice cream that I've ever had. Ice cream is different out here. Yo, this is one of, I believe, only a few in the world. David, is it interesting they, they squeeze out in strings? It like, is. it looks differently different. You know what, I saw them making the ice cream. They put a ton of real white rabbit candy in it, so I think that's why it has to come out that way. I would say the it's pretty light, actually. It's not too sweet. You know, I think white rabbit candy is actually really sweet, but this ice cream, is soft serve, very smooth, very light. You know that movie Crazy Rich Asians? This is Crazy Rich Green Tea! That's is it really, rich? Is that it rich? is, yeah. What do, you, what do they mean by rich? It tastes like it's been brewed with twice the amount of leaves. Wow. Yo, I love this brand, it's called Good Life. I'm not gonna lie guys, cartons, it's the worst way to drink something. You know in America, David, there's so many old industries that you can't change. That's why we're like, we're still drinking out of like milk cartons and stuff like that. When like, you know, in places that are like more developing, they like get to kind of make things more efficient. They're not held back by the old industries. Let me try this uh, caramel popcorn right here. Yeah, man, I don't know about that. I think it's sugar free oh. too. <laughs> No, it's literally like a bucket of Dr. Pepper that's had caramel corn soaked in it. Except like sugar-free, I think. We have the smoking BBQ flavored Which Dorito. I haven't seen in the States. And this one is interesting. They got Doritos jacked. I don't know what they mean by jacked, but I'm assuming they mean jacked with flavor. Smoking BBQ. I gotta say, it tastes more like barbecue than other barbecue flavored chips. I feel like other barbecue chips, they kind of taste like barbecue sauce. But this actually tastes like barbecue meat. Oh, I know what they mean by jack. These things are huge. These taste like a, like a Tex-Mex plate covered in cheese. No, these win the Doritos battle, I'm sorry. We're familiar with this brand in America. Mission Chips, known for their tortilla chips. However, it's funny because I've actually never really seen that many different flavors of Mission Chips. And this is a garlic butter flavor, and this is the tomato flavor. These are the garlic and butter flavored mission chips. Kind of weird. People are really into like salty umami flavors that are light. Butter flavor, you know, butter garlic definitely fits underneath that. Yo, know, actually after eating multiple of them, I like them. All right, tomato. Tomato mission chips. Yeah, I'm not really feeling the tomato one. I don't like this one. It's just tomato dust, guys. Next. We've had a lot of Asian snacks in our lives, and I'll tell you this, I've never had a sweet rice sandwich, and I've never had a pineapple sandwich. Yo, pineapple sandwich. Yo, this would be terrible for keto. All it is, 
is triple layer bread with you know preserved sugared pineapples in the middle. No, that's actually really good though. Yeah. Like that's a dessert on its own, man. Imagine put a little ice cream on top. Boom. This bread is super fluffy. You know it's fluffy when you can just compress it super easily. It looks like there's some tapioca in there. No, there's some sticky rice in here. Oh, yo, this is terrible for keto. Purple rice sandwich. This is just purple rice bread. This is so carby, except there's cream. Look, there's purple rice. Yeah, this has cream. a layer of condensed milk. I'm gonna give this a 4.5 out of five. Lychee chocolate. I don't taste much lychee. Are you? I do. But it's, it's subtle. Apple chocolate. Kind of tastes like a caramel apple. Mango dove chocolate. You know, I've, I taste the mango, but I don't know if I like it. I'm going with the passion fruit. All right. It looks like it has pieces of either candied or real passion fruit. Oh, man. I don't taste the passion fruit. Very strong. Lemon white chocolate. I think lemon and white chocolate makes sense. It's cool, but I don't really know if it's that funky. You might be able to find that in the States. Last but not least, something that I hope comes to the States soon, but you know, they're gonna have to, you know, test it with Dove's main demographic in Alabama is um, the matcha. That's pretty good. I mean, this is a good one. I think that this was the, the most well executed. All right, everybody, just to remind you guys, go ahead and turn on your notifications, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment. We read all the comments and then also, um, definitely try to check out all of our other Asian convenience store videos because we've traveled around Asia a lot and we love eating cheap food. So, all right, guys. Culture. Let's talk about it. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.